When the UAE's Ministry of Education closed schools and universities in response to COVID-19, most educational institutions were left scrambling to implement remote learning in a matter of weeks. The Higher Colleges of Technology, however, has been investing for the last 10 years in technology infrastructure, applications and training as it sought to upgrade its educational offering. HCT was institutionally ready for this. They didn't know it, but they were. When they had invested in IT infrastructure and started building content out, you know, creating this Uber-like education. So we were already marching down that path. So the pandemic, I call it a speed bump. This is a big speed bump. But we were moving along this path. When it became apparent that the Ministry of Education was planning to close schools, HCT decided to run a two-day pilot in order to see if its systems would scale. On March 4th and 5th, students were sent home to log onto Blackboard and attend virtual lectures, while faculty staff talked to empty classrooms and still reached over 20,000 students across the country. We also discovered that a lot of the students would have challenges technically. That was going to be the biggest issue, is whether their Wi-Fis were capable of handling the amount of streaming that was going to be going through their homes. HCT went beyond just fixing internet connectivity issues. As part of its no MRRT left behind policy, the institution supplied financial aid and equipment to students who weren't in a position to supply it themselves. No MRRT will be left behind. and. And that includes all aspects of, of teaching and learning. So this applies to this situation because in order to be able to live stream an instructor's videos themselves doing the lectures, uh, you have to have fairly high speed internet access in your homes. The majority of students had that, but some students financially weren't in a position. HCT has gone to extraordinary lengths to maintain the grades of its students. At a time when many other leading universities have offered students pass or no pass, HCT has modified its GPA calculation to provide all students with a legitimate grade. It was very important for us to maintain the grades for the students so that when they completed their semester, they had a legitimate feedback as to how they performed in a particular course. Other institutions, we felt, were taking the easy way out and decided, well, you either pass the course or you don't pass the course. As you watch this unfold with higher education, it became abundantly clear in our mind that HCT's brand could be compromised if we did not maintain and adhere to our ability to assess competencies for students and to provide proper grading of those assessments. The overnight addition of online assessments proved to be one of the more challenging technical aspects of the shift to distance learning. At any given time, the faculty would be assessing for their final exams of upwards between five and 6,000 students across the country. So one of the main challenges HCT had was remote proctoring of assessments. And that essentially was, we, we hadn't tried that before. We had already invested uh, two years ago in technologies like Respondus Monitor. But for example, Respondus Monitor was a free license, a limited number of seats that we had. But because uh, we went fully online, we had to scale to 23,000. Online assessments presented faculty with a significant new challenge. The main challenge is defining and applying consistently set of rubrics that will measure the all assessment types related to competency measurements. That's a challenge. The moderation and validation okay, required is time consuming. Pedagogically though, the move to online assessment has contributed to also shifting the test items to tackle higher cognitive complexities, which is very positive in education. Central to the shift to online learning has been the faculty's ability to embrace online content creation. From the second week of March, most teachers have had to acquire new skills for remote learning. Since then, HCT has delivered over 25,000 hours of personal development courses to its faculty. We adopted a strategy of um, saying, you have a big sandbox to play in now, go play. Um, and, and that took a lot of pressure off people because they were stressed out about it. And once we took the pressure off and the faculty saw that, they're working within that two hour block to adjust their content real time, getting feedback from the students and building that over time. With many teachers not traveling in July due to the pandemic, some took it upon themselves to get a head start with their course development. To produce one hour of course content, 
takes teachers approximately four hours of prep. The move to online delivery was so fast that faculty had to spend long, long hours uh, working on upgrading their content as well as upskilling their education technology skills. While it's an early stage to state the assessment of this experience, but the overall feedback that we've been receiving from students is very positive, despite the steep learning curve. The arrival of the pandemic has accelerated HCT's plans to establish its own remote learning model. Approved in June by the institution's board and implemented in July, the hybrid education model offers students both online learning and face-to-face -face lessons. Here we are today, full on with a hybrid model, which we believe is the global future of higher education. The hybrid model is very simple. It is just a hybrid combination of face-to-face -face and online delivery. The face-to-face -face is that laboratory practical component uh, that's being implemented today.